That one is right. G'day Dave. Believe it or not, this is a take about four or five. I'm having trouble with cameras. I've got two on it at the moment. Okay, this is the beast at the moment. This is what you can see. Uh, I'll run through it with you. See if I can answer some of the questions you were asking in the first place. You were curious about the um, the angle from the front, which is tapered. It's a very much of a, a V configuration. It really tapers in there. It's all tapers. There's no straight sides. I made the big mistake was when I uh, I laid the initial frame up out of um, quarter inch square slab sides, then went to assemble them with flush sides on. There's nothing flush on it at all. From the 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 push moth does have flat sides, so I've got a three view of the push moth, but it's non uh, hello, it's non it's non applicable for this. And I've made a mistake on this. This is still not correct. I have from here to here parallel. Then I have it tapering up. It should taper in from the bottom to the top. When you look at the uh, when you look at when you when, when you look at the bottom, it's all tapered. It's it's wide around the around the waist. It tapers to the nose, and it tapers to the uh, tapers to the tail. The original configuration for this from de Havilland is that the, uh, the pilot sat in the front and there was two passengers sat behind. They tried this with this particular aeroplane as the auto, that's the way it flew as a push mod. They tried that with the auto gyro but it was too heavy, it um, couldn't handle it so it only ever flew with two persons, one and one. So that's the, uh, that's the way that goes. Um, as I say, so it's all tapered so you were uh, from this point here, you taper down, and further on, you taper up. You taper up all the way. Um, the plans, I've modified the plans, the push mod plans, to the way I think it should be. And it's highlighted in a couple of different colours, and it's up to you to interpret the best you can. With CAD, obviously you're going to be able to make modifications, look at it, and, and turn it around. Um, I made so many mistakes because I, 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 I built something that I thought was correct uh, only to then sort of put it down beside a drawing, beside a, um, you know, bes beside, not a drawing, a, a picture and realise that it didn't look quite right. So then I had to modify it considerably. Um, the lower part of the frame I've used a simple uh, quarter square box with the old uh, Eiffel Tower effect. This is a this is this is a very very strong section down there. Get a bit closer. It's a uh, it's it's a very it, that's a very strong section down there. And then I used a, a a profile piece going through the fuzz, to which I attached the formers to, uh, and that's the way it goes. Now I'll point out one interesting thing. I think that is correct, which I haven't got right on this. The um, fuselage should taper back, on the top it should taper back from the top front of the windscreen all the way back to the fin so I believe it should taper back like that to the uh, to, to the centre line I haven't got this correct I've still got a bulge there but I'm going to live with that it's very hard to get a nice flowing line if you look at the pictures you can see the, the fabric covering there it's, uh, it, looks, it looks very nice with the stringers and the way it comes as you can see, I've gone for a uh, solid construction on this fella. I was trying to give as much strength as I possibly could to this to this top section for the uh, for the head. Uh, so this will be covered in uh, whatever I cover it in, a plastic iron on film, and then it'll be uh, black contact, flat trim material for the windows. But this one's going to be set up pretty ruggedly and pretty roughly anyhow. The tailplane. I don't think you'll find a picture of the plan of the tailplane anywhere, because I certainly couldn't. So this is what I've come out with by looking at drawings, and I've, I've made two or three. I've modified this one considerably. I've added a, an extra section on there. So this is the shape I believe it is. I will be putting a tail wheel here, a, a small tail wheel, to protect the fins, because I can see the fins being damaged quite easily. But talking about the fins, 
I have, um, come on, oh, stay on, magnets. I've gone to put magnets on these things. We're always knocking the damn tips off. So I figured if they are mounted on with magnets, hmm, oh, so I've done this on some of my EDF models. Uh, put magnets on various parts, tip tanks, etc. It's easy. So if they do, if they do get knocked off, they're not going to. get and same with the tile plane. The tile plane I'm going to have uh, fixed on with a magnet as the, um, as the fin. There's a, there's a mag, there was a magnet in there. Um, that fits into a recess. We're always knocking the fins off. You, you're knocking a fin off, go to repair it so you've got to dig it out to put glue in. I've just made it a tight fit and I'll have to put a bit more sign on it. But the uh, the fin will sit in there like that, and this is going to be uh, that's going to be put in with a magnet as well. So that's the shape of the tail plane. I believe I may have it a bees bum too wide. I'm not quite sure. Um, I might do so. I think I will. Uh, I'll, I'll run with it at the moment anyhow. Um, questions. You asked about the the undercarriage, and was that a shocker or etc. on the front there? I don't know. I can't tell by the pictures either. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 3mm ply plate on there with the three wire undercarriage coming to the wheel at the front. Now I'm not going to put a um, I'm not going to put a um, steering on that. You remember back in the days of the old uh, tricycle tricycle undercarriage on the trainers? Well, people were always breaking and knocking those. They were damaging the servos. They were mucking the stuck the tail wheel up, and it was a real problem. You could never get them to steer. So what I figured, I, in the end, I made it with a trailing wheel. So if the wheel comes down and pivots, the rudder will steer it. So that's what I'm going to do with this. But I'm going to make it so if I do give it a knock, the entire plate is removable, so I can make any adjustments and push it back on again. Um, the main undercarriage is going to be, as you have done in the PCA2, coming out from the fuzz. But this will be coming out from these points here, coming down, and just a couple of dummy struts, if anything, going up to the wings. Um, what can I say? The um, pro next project is the wings. So this will be, uh, I'll be making the wings over this weekend, most likely. Um, so this section will be removed. I've reinforced it already so I can take it out. Um, the wings will sit in place. I don't think I'm having ailerons. I might build them in, but I don't think I'm going to have ailerons. I don't think it'll be necessary. The first auto gyro I ever flew was a winged, what was it called, a Kestrel. The one they made with the, with the, with the wing and the twin rotors. Well, I didn't put the twin rotors, I put a T-Trank head on it and it flew. It flew with just rudder and elevator. Amazingly enough, it flew with rudder and elevator. So that's, um, I don't think I'll be worrying about ailerons, but I'm going to make the wing so it sits into this captive space with a couple of dowels holding it in place, and then this will fit in there after it's holding it in place. Like I said, there will be a. I'll put a little wheel there just to protect the fins. Uh, where else have we got to? Yeah, this um, this top section, you find it on the plans. It's it's quite laid out. The, the 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 moth is exactly the same as this setup. But of course, this where De Havilland guys varied from the moth. This front screen is considerably higher. You've only got to put pictures together. This is. I reckon on the full size it must have been an easy foot higher, 12 inches higher on the screen there. So that's a, a major deviation from the plan there. Uh, this here, I, I reckon I'll do with, um, I'll make a wrap over job using the old SIG um, Rhino hide. 20 year, old, 20 year old sheet of Rhino hide there. I'll either use Rhino hide or um, maybe litho plate, make, make the whole thing so it wraps over in one piece. or maybe even a bit, of, a bit of cardboard, I don't know. So that can be made to fit over in one piece, gives you access to the radio and battery, if that's where the battery's gonna finish up. Got the uh, block for the cowl, so it, she sits up there like that, to be carved a little bit. The, um, the top plate will go on there, of course, with four bolts, four nylon bolts holding the entire assembly and the top, I'll be making the top out of um, 
blue foam. A block of blue foam carved the shape. And virtually just put it Pretty much the same as, as this on the other model there. That's blue foam with two layers of um, uh, half ounce cloth epoxied onto there. Uh, and uh, I reckon magnets again. Four magnets on there on, on top of the assembly. Easy. You spoke about uh, a pre-rotator. It would be easy in this model, I think, especially the one you're doing considerably bigger. There'd be room to mount a pre-rotator, but I'm still... I'm still making my mind up whether to go for um, roll. I don't want it fixed. I think you said you're going to make, make fixed. I don't think I want fixed. I think I'm going to have roll or DC, and then just um, I mean, just a couple of them, um, uh, just a servo for the using the elevators just just for trim. I think that would be a good idea. The servos for the tail for the rudder and the elevator are going right under the tail plane, right nice down the back. There's plenty of room for the rest of the gear, so the, the other assembly in there. Um, I can most likely get my battery in there. I'll be running a, a 4,000 milliamp pack in there. And by the way, the, the weight is going at the moment. I, I think the battery is going to be pretty much along those lines. I'm not quite sure. You don't know till you get to these parts. Now, when it comes to scale, it's pretty hard for anybody to criticise this model being scale or not because... There's no drawings of it. I mean, it's not as if it's not as if I've had access or you've had access to get hold of a three view. If you could get a, a nice three view and, uh, and, and and play with that, it's great. But I don't think there's too many people to say that's wrong or that's wrong. But uh, say so just repeating what I said before, the, the, I found one of the major variations from the from the um, moth was that the moth that the, the sides were completely parallel. They were completely flat-sided, whereas this one, they taper in at that point there, they taper more in at that point there, and at the front, they taper out. So you got a you got a, a, a mighty twist, and it was it was a bit of a battle to get everything to to be nicely lined up and true. Yeah, it was a hell of a bloody battle to see all this truth. But the the lines are the lines are pretty good. This there's from all the all the pictures I look at, it looks as if there's that's that's got a bit of a curvature on it. That looks slightly curved. But to get that curved line to blend in to this top section and to this side section is hard. So as I say, this section I have wrong. I have that I have that straight. You see it again. I've, I've, I've got I've got that this section parallel on either side, and then it tapers. But that should taper from there to the bottom. So that should be there like that. So if this were, were to be made without these two corners on here like I've done, it'd be a lot better. But this is just an initial run. I'm not going to do any fancy finishing with this. This is just going to be covered in, in white film. And I'm not going to go for that pale, the, the, the pictures of the pale blue. Oh, that's going to be a giveaway. That's going to be terrible. I don't think I could ever make one in, in pale blue because you wouldn't be able to see the bloody thing in the sky. So I think I'll be going for my favourite um, uh, yellow colour. Um, yeah, it's not going to be correct, but it's going to be visible. I, I, I personally find yellow is just about the, the, the best colour to see for my models. So that's the way I'll be going with that thing. So that's the way it is at the moment. Highly removable. Everything will, I'll knock all the bits off in here anyway. So. But um, that's the way it is at the moment. So uh, I'll go and see if I can play with my computer if it lets me in. And I'll see if I can uh, upload this way. So um, ciao for now, buddy.